Tonight, a special edition of World News Tonight, America on the eve of the high stakes 2024 presidential election. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump delivering their closing arguments. Tonight, what the final ABC News poll now reveals. And the state of the race tonight in the key battleground states. More than 80 million Americans voting already. Now the campaigns in their ground games, the effort to get voters to the polls on election day. Vice President Kamala Harris, the final day of campaign, entirely from Pennsylvania, far storming the state with a four star. The team knocking on five million voters in that state alone. Vice President Harris and her campaign are not going to be in the last 24 hours. Former President Donald Trump lifting three battleground states in what he says is his last campaign, asking all you better off than you were four years ago. Continuing the violent record of his closing days, joking now about reporters and his rallies and getting shot. Mary Lewis Rachel Scott replying to the new poll where this race stands. And John Collins can arrive with new reporting that he's just learned from both campaigns tonight what they're now saying and how they're feeling about election day. We have both campaigns covered and new reporting just in from John Carl tonight. The first campaigns for you behind the scenes on this night before the election. Starting with the ABC characters for yourself on the Harris Kamala Harris getting off to battleground Pennsylvania. Tonight, barnstorming in must win state with four separate stops on the last day of the world. Somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much. I don't mind. I don't mind it. It comes just days after he imagined guns trained at the feet of former Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know when the guns are trained on their face. In the final days, Trump, who lost both the popular vote in 2020 and the Electoral College, insisted he should never have left the White House. He should be wrong. I mean, honestly, because we did so, we did so well. And he's already questioning this election. Today, top election officials in key battlegrounds speaking out, saying the vote is secure. It turned out to the other campaign, former President Donald Trump closing out his 
Bobcat made with three stops at the Battleground States, North Carolina, Pennsylvania tonight. She'll be in this with ABC's Rachel Scott on the Trump County. Tonight in North Carolina, Donald Trump and the closing argument his team was hoping for in the final days. What he said in his last campaign. But I'd like to begin by asking a very simple question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I've asked that question so many times, I've never had one hand go up to the other. With your vote tomorrow, I will end inflation, I will stop the invasion of criminals coming into our country. Former president calling this the end of one journey. This is really the end of a journey, but I knew when the world was done, and this is what we wanted to do. In these crucial final hours, Trump also taking time to do an interview on the podcast with former New England Patriots coach Bill Belichick. This is more exciting, I hate to say it, coach, but this is more exciting than any football game. The interview in keeping with Trump's strategy to win support among young men, which that doesn't typically turn out in large numbers. He featured wrestler Hope Hogan at his campaign events and recently sat down for a lengthy interview on Joe Rogan's podcast. Do you want to go with an eight-year-old president? But one of Trump's most prominent female supporters, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, has warned her This is not a time for them to get overly masculine with this romance thing that they've got going. Fifty-three percent of the electorate are women. Women will vote. He just go with the Republican Party. Pennsylvania, her campaign ending with a major rally at the famous Rocky Steps in Philadelphia. Donald Trump, after barnstorming three battleground states until the early hours of the morning. Former President Trump today voting with former First Lady Melania Trump. Visiting his campaign headquarters in West Virginia. Asking if he any regrets about the race he's run and what the former president has said about that. Everything's great to stop and written by the big board. They're all here tonight. Seven critical battleground states at the center of this election, perhaps none more crucial than Pennsylvania. The state considered a must-win state for both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Some voters waiting for hours. Supporters on both sides tonight calling this the most important election of their life. The Georgia battleground President Biden winning that state by just 11,000 votes just four years ago. Tonight, the fake law that sent the poll workers coming from Russian email accounts. Tonight, the state insisted voting has not been interrupted. And how soon did the bill is a country with the results from Georgia and the other battlegrounds? Steve Ocean in Georgia picked the big war until this right through the time of the night. Nearly 86 million Americans voting early this year, but we're already learning about the votes and who cast them, men and women, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. And what both candidates need to do on this election day to win. And tonight, the first clues from the preliminary exit polls, voters from early voting and from in-person voting on this election day, reached by phone, text, and email. Voters were asked what was their top issue. Out of the five, the state of democracy topping the list. 35% said it was their top concern, 31% said the economy, 14% abortion, 11% said immigration, and 4% said foreign policy. Voters were asked, do you believe our democracy is secure or threatened? More voters say it is threatened than secure. 73% said it's threatened. 25% said democracy is secure. And on candidates' favorability, 44% said they see Donald Trump favorably. 54% see him unfavorably. 48% of voters said they see Kamala Harris favorably. 50% unfavorably. 
They are preliminary exit polls from across the country. It is still very early. John Carl standing by here with what he's just learned from the sources inside both campaigns tonight. How they're feeling about the early vote and what they're now seeing today on election day with turnout. We're going to get here with ABC's Barry Bruce on the Harris campaign. Tonight from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Snellville, Georgia, and Detroit, Michigan. Long lines of voters seeking to the battleground as this hard fought election finally draws to a close. parties at the polls, people dancing, people celebrating, which is kind of what today should be. To Georgia. We're battle tested and we'll have a process in place to make sure we follow the law, follow the Constitution, and report the results accurately. All right, Mary Bruce, back with us tonight at election headquarters, and Mary, going into today, election day, uh, here in America, the Harris campaign obviously took note in the key Rust Belt states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Harris held a slight lead in the early voting. Of course, that's over Republicans. The other category, independents, we just don't know. It's sort of a black box. From ABC News, this is a special election night edition of World News Tonight with David Muir. Reporting tonight from ABC News Election Headquarters in New York. Good evening, it's great to have you with us here on this election night in America, one of the most consequential elections in recent history. After an extraordinary campaign, a former president running for re-election, a sitting president bowing out, his vice president stepping in. And since that moment, three months ago, the race has been a virtual dead heat, reflecting a sharply divided nation. The first poll set to close just a short time from now in some of the key battlegrounds. But this election, like many before it, may call for patience. The race for the White House may not be decided tonight. Different states with different rules. It could take some time to tally the vote, especially in such a close race. But we will get results in some of those key battlegrounds tonight. It will all begin to take shape uh, with just a couple of hours right here live on ABC. So watch it unfold right here. In the meantime, the first exit is coming in tonight. The voters are saying after passing their ballots on the economy, abortion rights, immigration, border security. Nearly 86 million Americans voted early, tens of millions voting in person today across this country on Election Day. This line right here is sticking down the street at a polling site in Philadelphia. Former President Donald Trump and former First Lady Melania Trump casting their ballots today in West Palm Beach, Florida. In the last 24 hours, Trump's last day on the trail, the former president making stops in three battleground states, still campaigning after midnight in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Vice President Kamala Harris stopping by the Democratic Party headquarters in Washington today, pitching in to make calls to voters. The Vice President crisscrossing Pennsylvania on her final day of campaigning, finishing with a star-studded rally in Philadelphia on those famous museum steps where Rocky trained for his underdog win. And tonight, the first clues from the preliminary exit polls, voters from early voting and from in-person voting on this election day, reached by phone, text, and email. Voters were asked what was their top issue 
out of the five, the state of democracy topping the list. 35% said it was their top concern, 31% said the economy, 14% abortion, 11% said immigration, 4% said foreign policy. Voters were asked, do you believe our democracy is secure or threatened? More voters say it is threatened than secure. 73% said it is threatened. 25% said democracy is secure. And on candidates' favorability, 44% said they see Donald Trump favorably. 54% see him unfavorably. 48% of voters said they see Kamala Harris favorably. 50% unfavorably. They are preliminary exit polls across the country. It is still very early. John Carl standing by here with what he's just learned from the sources inside both campaigns tonight. How they're feeling about the early vote and what they're now seeing today on election day with turnout. In here with ABC's Barry Bruce on the Harris campaign. Tonight from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Snellville, Georgia, and Detroit, Michigan, long lines of voters sneaking through the battleground as this hard fought election finally draws to a close. Thank you. Have you voted already? You did. Thank you. <laughs> surprise stop at the Democratic Party headquarters, working the phones, speaking to voters, and even their children. What's your name? said today when asked if he had any regrets after this campaign. Rachel Scott on the Trump campaign again tonight. In Palm Beach, Florida, Donald Trump arriving to cast his ballot with his wife Melania. The former president says this will be his last campaign, and that he's sad but very fulfilled. Reporters asking Trump if he has any regrets about the race he's run. But regrets, you always have regrets. I can't think of any, to be honest, to use her expression. I can't think of any. Trump bringing his third presidential campaign to a close with a whirlwind 24-hour sprint across three battleground states, hitting North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and finally Grand Rapids, Michigan, his last rally ending well after midnight. We can fix every single problem our country faces and lead America and lead the world. New heights of glory, but it 
indeed. Think of that statement, how beautiful that is. New heights of glory, that's what's going to happen. In the final days of this race, Trump's message, a dark one. Today, the former president asked if he'll tell his supporters to refrain from violence if he loses. Of course there'll be no violence. My supporters are not violent people. I don't have to tell them. And they, I certainly don't want any violence, but I certainly don't have to tell them. These are great people. These are people that believe in no violence. Scott back with us, of course. A similar question to you that I asked Mary on the Harris campaign this time for the Trump campaign. They were very happy with their early voter members. How convinced are they that they've got additional new Republican voters to pull down the election? This one's going to be a wild card, David, because Republicans changed their tune on this and started to encourage their supporters to get out early and vote. The Trump campaign has been laser focused on trying to mobilize people who typically do not turn out to vote in person on election day or early, especially young male voters. One person who has been helping with that, billionaire Elon Musk, will be a Donald Trump tonight in Mar-a-Lago. He'll be there. All right, Rachel Scott will be with us all election night long, many, many hours ahead of us. Can't wait. Let's turn to a battleground state that's uh, really not more important than Pennsylvania, the candidate who in fact, wins Pennsylvania, wins the White House 90% of the time. It is a crucial state. ABC's Matt Gutman outside Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Tonight in Battleground, Pennsylvania, voters lined up, some waiting hours to cast their ballots in this must-win state for Trump and Harris. Thank you for coming out. Absolutely most important election in my lifetime. Many residents in Bellwether, Bucks County, focusing on inflation. Cast the ballot. What, what are you thinking about? Well, now that we've ruined that country. And for others, like Danielle, a mother of two, it's an intense person. She lost her child. This is my representation of her. She got her big sister shirt on. So she was still born. I did have a miscarriage before that, so also Tonight, intense scrutiny for some isolated voting problems. Well, Western PA voting hours in Hampton County extended after early morning technical issues. And outside Scranton, voting delayed in Missouri County. An election official was late. The Philadelphia District Attorney saying tonight there's been no indication of voter fraud. This is the time. We got an issue. Bring it to us. Show us the evidence. We are here in an even-handed fashion. And David, to give you a sense of how important this state is for the candidates. Together, they have spent more than half a billion dollars here, made over 42 campaign stops by a wide margin more than any other state. David, we're really glad you're there in Pennsylvania. Again, a crucial state, Matt. Thank you. And out of the battleground of Georgia, you'll remember four years ago, President Biden winning that state by just about 11,000 votes. Tonight, the news, the fake bomb threats sent to poll workers coming from Russian email accounts in Georgia. State insisting voting has not been interrupted, and so here's the question tonight. How soon could we know Georgia's results? ABC Steve Osamsami lives in Georgia. He's our Georgia expert, and he's with us all night long. Hey, Steve. Hey, David. The biggest challenge has been those fake bomb warnings sent to poll workers in counties that officials say are favorable to the vice president. The Secretary of State says that none of those were real, and a few polling places did have to close for about half an hour, but otherwise we've seen few problems, and most people are spending just minutes casting their votes. A new state law means that we're going to see results tonight for as much as 70% of the vote very quickly. By law, the early vote and absentee votes on hand have to be reported by the counties within an hour of the polls closing, which could mean as early as 8 p.m. Eastern. And the Secretary of State is saying that we could have as much as 90% of the total vote counted by tonight. But to put this in perspective, we have to remember what happened in 2020. The presidential election here went on for days. It was super close, and Joe Biden won by just under 12,000 votes. David, Steve Osinsami in Atlanta for us tonight. Steve, our thanks to you. Our political director, Rich Lyon, went back over at the big board tonight. Rick, first of all, the early voting numbers, they really have been quite impressive from both sides as we headed into Election Day. Just uh, give us a recap of where we stand. Yeah, David, the number of people voting are only 86 million and counting. And it's going to approach the record from last time. Of course, that was the COVID year. It's going to be hard to match that. But the big difference is in the, the breakdown among party identification. In 2020, we saw a 10-point gap. That's 44% of the Democrats, only 34% Republicans. This time around, it's just a two-point gap. This time, Democrats only slightly outnumbering the number of Republicans. And the big number here that we're looking at, 22% of unaffiliated voters. We don't know who they voted for. That's going to be a big 
demographics for both of them to, to, to try to lock in. We simply have no idea how that vote will break down once those votes are tallied. In the meantime, we're going to take us through the night. You just heard Steve tell us that Georgia is pretty convinced it could have 90% of the vote tallied tonight in one of the key battlegrounds. That's an encouraging time. Yeah, just taking a look at the battlegrounds. We start in the southeast and then we to the north and west. Georgia and North Carolina, they're both close relatively well. They're seven and seven days. We're expecting a relatively fast count. Pennsylvania, we close the eight, but it's going to take a long time to get results. Michigan could be a little bit earlier. Yes, the, the final poll is at nine, but a lot of voters in the state are actually going to be so we'll see data in. Those upper Midwestern states will be critical, but Pennsylvania just looks so important about how you slice this election. We always say that. We say it for a reason for the time it's tonight. Thanks, Greg. John Carl, working with sources just before we came on the air. I know you did talk to former President Donald Trump. How is he feeling about these early vote numbers and what he saw us turn out today? First of all, general comment. I, I think both campaigns, um, both are objective confidence for expecting this to be a long night and a very, very close result. Uh, I asked President Trump, former President Trump, how he read uh, what he has seen come in these early votes in the, in the final poll. And this is a very interesting answer. He said, I don't know. Uh, we have had a lot of enthusiasm, but I cannot read it, and I don't think anybody can read it. Again, not usually what we hear from Donald Trump. People say he genuinely doesn't know uh, what to make of the result. And from the Harris campaign, Mary reported that they're also very just optimistic, but uh, she said cautiously, but I've heard cautiously optimistic. Yeah, no, I've heard Mary say, look, uh, they feel very good about Philadelphia. Uh, they believe that they hit the targets they had to hit in Philadelphia. They hit absolutely essential for the Democrats in that kind of green state by, by about noon, and they can have more than they expect. So cautiously optimistic, but I think this will be very close election. We saw in Philadelphia, we're looking at how they're eating Pittsburgh tonight also. Republicans are split across the state. Can't wait until we actually get some numbers in here. Thanks so much. Uh, and of course, it's not just the presidency at stake tonight. The tour of Congress also on the ballot. Take a look at this. Uh, the Senate, where Democrats right now currently have a narrow control of the Senate. 34 seats to go tonight. Republicans need to get just two seats to have the majority to take back control of the Senate. Only one seat of Donald Trump wins the vice president and gets a vote. In the House, it's the Republicans currently in control, as you know, all 435 seats of the Democrats. Democrats need just four seats to flip the House and take back control of the Senate. So we try to run election night coverage for this minutes from now, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, right here. In the meantime, we turn to the other news this Tuesday night, the alleged Russian plot to get explosive devices on the planes bound for the U.S. and Canada. Investigators are covering it after fires at two shipping hubs in Europe. Tonight, the authorities are building an image of a possible suspect. ABC's Gio Benito. Tonight, the Kremlin is dismissing allegations of a Russian plot to hide explosive devices on board cargo planes bound for the U.S. and Canada. Senior U.S. official confirming the investigation first reported by the Wall Street Journal after two electronic devices impacted with a magnesium-based flammable substance exploded in July at DHL cargo hub in Leipzig, Germany, and Birmingham, England. These packages were very, very small, but even a small amount of burning magnesium was going down the whole According to the journal, this photo shows a man suspected of sending multiple devices from a DHL office in Lithuania. One of several arrested in connection with the plot that authorities believe is part of an ongoing Russian sabotage campaign against the West for its support of Ukraine. Russia calling the allegations incoherent. Think about what would happen here. Disappeared somewhere over the country. It would drown commercial aviation around the world. And David, over the past few months, the TSA has been increasing security for cargo shipments. David, really long to you. Thank you. When we come back, it's not just the left and I've actually probably worked with the VA and a hurricane. Raphael expected to grow in the river. We're heading straight toward the U.S. The latest time in this country. Tonight we're tracking tropical storm Raphael as it makes its way toward the Gulf. The system near Jamaica now, with winds up to 60 miles per hour, is expected to become a hurricane by tomorrow. Tropical storm running already from the Florida Keys to Fort tomorrow. We could make that fall across the U.S. coast as early as Sunday. When we come back here tonight, the encouraging news on gas prices, and we celebrate our poll workers on this election day as the whole team joins us here in a moment as we get started at 7 p.m. Tonight, gas prices nearing their lowest point of the year. The national average has fallen to $3.10 per gallon, regular right? 24 states, low $3. When we come back with the world watching, the people making sure your vote gets counted. We're just minutes away, so the first polls begin to close the first results. We still have...
states to count. We still have states that have not been called yet. We will continue overnight to fight to make sure that every vote is counted, that every voice has spoken. So you won't hear from the vice president tonight, but you will hear from her tomorrow. She will be back here tomorrow to address not only the HU family, not only to address her supporters, but to address the nation. So thank you. We believe in you. May God bless you. May God keep you. And go HU and go Harris. Thank you all. Never an easy moment for whatever campaign has to make that announcement into the evening and say, well, hold on here and we're gonna we're gonna hold on hope in the, in the early morning hours. Well I wanna thank you all very much. This is great. These are our friends. We have thousands of friends of this incredible This was a movement like nobody's ever seen before. And <laughs> And now it's going to reach a new level of importance because we're going to help our country heal. We're help our country heal. Needs help. And needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. We made history for a reason tonight, and the reason is going to be just that. We overcame obstacles that nobody thought possible, and it is now clear that we have achieved the most incredible political thing. And look what
given us an unprecedented and powerful mandate. We have taken back control of the Senate. Wow. My father-in-law, Victor, is tremendous, and we miss very much Melania's mother, Amalia. We miss Amalia, don't we, huh? She would be very happy right now, standing on this stage. She'd be so proud. She was a great woman, that one. Beautiful inside and out. She was a great woman. I want to be uh, the first to congratulate our great, now I can say, Vice President-elect of the United States.
wait four years and we're going to turn our country around, make it something very special.